Hello and welcome to Good Morning Thailand. Today we'll be sp- talking about some of the headlines across Thailand, starting with our thumbnail, which is regarding a motorcycle rider. Netty, do you ever feel sleepy while riding your car or motorbike? Uh, a couple times, yeah, which is very dangerous. Well, according to the law, if you are driving your car... And, you know, you feel drowsy. You're supposed to park on the side of the road and take a quick nap until you feel fresh enough to drive once again. That's the proper safety, safe way to do it according to Thai uh, road laws. Is that a law or is that like a recommendation? Well, a recommendation. Okay, I see. You know, mm-hmm. but but yeah, according to road yes. safety rules. Of but course. a motorcycle rider has gone viral for taking a nap in the middle of the main road. <laughs> also, a motorcycle rider... A weary motorcycle rider was awakened by a group of men after he slept on his parked motorcycle in the middle of the main road. The men recorded a video of the sleepy motorcycle rider and sent it to a local news Facebook page named Here on Board, and obviously it went viral. Mm. Uh, The video reveals the men trying to wake the man sleeping, mouth wide open as if catching flies, on the seat of his motorcycle at night. The group of men actually uh, tried to wake the man up by saying, like, excuse me, brother, wake up, bro, bro. Do you know what you're you're sleeping in the middle of the road, man? What are you doing right now? Please wake up. And, you know, he was a bit unresponsive. He was a bit slow. He looked a bit drunk. Is he drunk? Why is he so drowsy? But when the rider finally woke up from his slumber, he seemed to be very confused as if not knowing what he was doing. Oh, no. He told the men that he was not drunk, and uh, the the boys actually even decided to give him a test. They said, okay, if you're not drunk, show me two fingers. And yeah, he, he managed to show them two fingers. I think should, they should have gone for a higher number. Um, <laughs> But yeah, he raised his two fingers to confirm that he was completely fine. He later asked one of the guys, can you please actually drive me home? What? Yeah, he was like, uh, oh, yeah. So he so he basically woke up and he was like, guys, I I don't think I'm up for it. Could you could you drive me home? Oh, okay, okay. That that's responsible. I thought the people who are trying to test him asked for a ride home. No, 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 no. no, no, It's the other way around. So so, (laughs) you know, throughout the video, they were like, hey, like you know, you're you're in the middle of the road. There are cars going by. Yes, it's night time, but you know, it's not even the side of the road. It was it was the wrong side of the road. (laughs) Right. (laughs) And and they were like, "Uh, can can hey like come on you. You got to wake up. Mm. Uh, but yeah, eventually um, he woke up and he, w- he he was honest about it. He was like, guys, I don't think I'm up for it. Can you please drive me home? And one of the guys actually drove him home. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah. Good Samaritans. Good Samaritans. Just like with cameras, though. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, the road where the incident actually occurred has not been reported, but it does not look like a typical road where you would normally find in Bangkok. So mm-hmm. we're not actually sure if it's in Bangkok. Uh, the capital roads are generally very busy and dangerous. So if it was in Bangkok, there'd be a lot more cars. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. Um, Quite, quite a few people online praised the group of men for being extremely helpful. Some thought that the video was hilarious, while others uh, didn't think it was funny at all. They were like, okay, it's quite dangerous and risky. And they got lucky that these group of uh, young men helped them out. So yeah, good Samaritans indeed. What would you do if you saw a man sleeping, <laughs> lying back, mouth wide open in the middle of the road? But the fact that his mouth was just open like that... It- yeah. Almost looked like he was either drunk, high, or something. He was on something. He, he seemed a little bit. He's a he's bit, had a little yeah. bit of a night. He's yeah. had a couple of cold beverages, hasn't right. he? Right, apple cider for well, adults. Yes. Well, staying on the topic of motorbike riders, our next story uh, revolves around Grab delivery drivers who've been protesting in Bangkok. Nettie, what have they been protesting about? Yes. So. This is what happened. Recently, Grab introduced a zoning system which forces uh, drivers to book a time slot and an area to work in before starting their shift. And this has led to people's uh, competing for shifts and means that the driver can no longer work when they want to, which was once an employee benefit the company took pride in. Now, with the new zoning system, drivers can't make any money at all if the slots are all booked up. So the protesters had three demands for them. They said cancel the zoning system. Number two, get rid of multiple orders per ride. And the last one is to reinstate the previous delivery fee after it was reduced to uh, uh, reduce buy to to four baht per ride, so they even lowered the fee. Then they created the zoning mm. system, and then once it's all booked out, then they can't work. And sometimes people just want to work at three a.m. And now yeah. they can't 
just wake up and go to work, right? Yeah. So around 800 Grab drivers gathered around Bangkok, uh, the Grab Grab headquarters to protest the new policies yesterday. And the Grab Thailand has issued a statement saying that they will respond to the driver's concerns within 14 days, which obviously is not quick enough. Yeah. So the Grab drivers are still furious about it, but they can't do much about it. So we'll have to wait and see if they'll, how to call it, cancel this new zoning system. But it makes sense, right? Because it if you are a hardworking person and you're like, okay, I want to work from 8 to 12, those are the rush hours. People are going to work. People are going to lunch. Mm -hmm. But you can't because the time slots have been uh, fully occupied. Yeah, pretty much. And they don't, want to, what, they don't want to start turf wars within grab drivers. Yeah, and I was thinking, like, that's exactly the problem with the, you know, the the orange suit yeah. motorcycles because they're in zones yeah. and it creates a lot of gang rivals between them and mm -hmm. then now they're kind of doing with grab drivers as well like why would you do yeah. that well i like the second point though getting rid of the multiple orders yes please get rid <laughs> of the multiple orders it, it's not even it's beneficial for the driver because okay they take one order they get on time the customer's happy and they're not berating the grab driver mm -hmm. or they don't give them a bad rating because mm -hmm. most of the times you don't want to deal with the grab rider you know mm -hmm. The, your grab rider has multiple orders. He's 40 minutes late. You're hungry. You're pissed off. You're not going to take it out on him. You're just going to give him a one-star rating and then, you know, say bad service or mm, something like that. True. It's not his fault. Yeah. He's allowed to take two orders, so that's his right. Mm. So as a company, it should be grab. And, uh, yeah, it seems like they're not happy with it as well. Ah, okay. I think that's what they're talking about, right? Multiple I orders. I think so, yes. Yeah. All right. Anyways. Um our last story before we go to the break uh, is actually re uh, requiring, not requiring, regarding snakes. Now, our resident snake expert, one Jason Clark, is not here today. Mm -hmm. He's gone to get his motorbike license. <laughs> That's a lot of information is it for though? the viewer. Okay, is okay. It? We just yeah. we one story, two story, three story motorbikes. I felt like it was relevant. Oh, okay. But uh, I see. yeah, since our resident snake expert is not here, and he because he has snakes as pets. Do you have snakes as pets? I don't. They well, scare me. One Thai man narrowly survived a bite from his pet monocle cobra. Yes. Why would you have a cobra as a pet? We don't know why, but this is actually a deadly venomous snake. Okay. And typically, now the owner, he didn't want to reveal his identity, so I will just call him Mr. A. He said that the snake of his, it's a female, and she is typically non, not aggressive at all and has a very good temper. And he even compared her to an eel. <coughs> okay. Did you hear that? Yeah. Compared to an eel. Yeah. Anyways, he said that he regularly picks her up with uh, his bare hands because he trusts her. However, the day that the snake bit him was because she was shedding her skin and she was in a grumpy mood. And that's why, psst, you know. Psst. Don't touch me. Yeah, don't touch me. Go away. Okay. Anyhow, the snake owner, because he knows a lot about snakes, he did some first, uh, how to call it, basic first aid on himself, and then asked his friend to drive him to the hospital. He had to wait for two hours for the anti-venom to arrive, and he said, like, he he thought to himself, maybe I won't make it, because he was feeling dizzy, mm -hmm. he was um, sweating profusely, all of that. But the doctor said that, um, well, obviously he, is sur he has survived to t retell the story. And the doctor said that if it wasn't because he did the first aid kit on himself first, he wouldn't have made it. So, guys, if you want to know how he survived, number one, if you get bitten by a snake, wash out the wound with clean water to dilute the venom. Also, stop moving the area that you got bitten to prevent the venom from entering the bloodstream and traveling around the body. Also, did you know that sucking the venom with your mouth is also a no-no? That's okay. a misconception. A lot of people like to do that. But yeah, from I movies, mean, yeah, right? From like, movies. Oh, let me just suck the venom out. Oh, I'm such a man. I'm Rambo. Yeah, but that would just make it travel down to your, yeah. your stomach. <laughs> and also, try to stay awake because the venom attacks the nervous system. So you want to be alert all the time. Try to, anyway. Okay. All right. Note to self. Or don't have a pet cobra. Oh, you're that also that. helps. Yes. That also helps. Yes, sir. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a quick break. Once we come back from the break, we've got some more stories from around Thailand. Stay tuned. We'll be back right after this. Thinking of investing, but don't know where to start? Ever heard of AAAFX? 
What is AAAFX? Good question. Look no further than AAAFX, your choice for trading and investing. Low commissions and spread with fast execution. They're trustworthy and have been offering services since 2008. You can invest using various deposit methods including crypto with negative balance protection and 100% matching deposit bonus. Choose AAAFX and enter the lucrative market of trading. Visit AAAFX.com. Welcome back. You're watching Good Morning Thailand, and this show is brought to you by AAAFX and BISP. If you're into trading, then look no further than AAAFX. And if you're looking for a great education for your loved one, look no further than British International School Phuket. We're actually going to be there later this November, so you can stay tuned for a first-hand experience of a great international school here in Thailand. Links in the description below. Natty, I've got Hello. an update. Yeah. Remember we were talking about Craig the SLP yesterday? Yes. He has now upgraded to becoming a Tiger Elite. Tiger Elite! We Good will sir. We salute, salute you. you. Thank you for joining the Elite Gang. He's now in a gang of four. Oh, yay! Yeah, that's thank right. You. So, thank you, Craig. He's actually a long-standing member, a long-standing Tiger Legend. Thank you for upgrading and uh, supporting us even more. Uh, we appreciate your continued support and love for the channel, Craig. Mm. Okay, Natty. Yes, sir. Are you ready for my quick fire round? I'm going to do a quick fire round. Oh, I am ready. Get ready to be updated on the current affairs of Thailand. My first story is if you can't beat them, join them. TAT has signed airline deals in a bid to lure, not my choice of word, lure one million Americans. Hmm. The TAT is hoping to welcome at least one million tourists from the U.S. next year after securing partnerships with Delta Airlines and Korean Air to bring travelers from 17 gateway cities across the country to Thailand. The TAT governor actually came out and said that, look, Thai Airways doesn't fly within those cities and Thailand does not have a flag carrier that can offer direct flights from the U.S. So the agency turned to international airlines to bring tourists here. Mm. So if you can't beat them, just join them. Nice. That works. Our next story is regarding teen vaping crisis is driving the public uneasy. Oh. Now, officials and medical experts have come out and said that they are worried about the teens of Thailand because they're vaping a lot. A domestic tobacco control network has voiced concern about young children smoking e-cigarettes. There's been a spike in the number of teenagers who vape in Thailand. According to a survey done in uh, 2019, 5.3% of children aged 10 to 19 years old have tried vaping, and 2.9% of them do so regularly. Uh, 10, though, that's really young. Yes, 10 is actually mm. young. I don't know how they're getting access to that. but um, And among the total number, 30% of them on average are women. Oh. Or female. Hey, hey. Yes. So there's a crisis, possibly. Not a mm -hmm. crisis, but, you know, you don't want your teens to be vaping here in Thailand. Vaping's illegal. Yeah. Now, <laughs> continuing on the topic of uh, Thailand and broadcasting things, uh, Plan to Air World Cup Games is now in doubt. Mm -hmm. I was talking about it just the other day with Mr. Bastich. A government plan to purchase the rights to broadcast the 2022 FIFA World Cup is up in the air after some National Broadcasting and Telecommunication Commission board members <gasps> voiced their disagreement due to budgetary constraints. Fans were concerned as no broadcasters in Thailand had shown an interest in securing the rights because mm -hmm. they were like, this was a ridiculous price. We wouldn't want to send that, spend that much money. So it came down to the NBTC drawing on 1.6 billion baht from their research and development fund to buy the broadcasting rights. Mm -hmm. Now, members uh, actually had a meeting and they were opposing the ideas because they were like... Um, Guys, why are we spending 1.6 billion baht from our research and development fund to buy broadcasting rights to show football across Thailand? Because the money can surely be spent on other more viable initiatives. Yeah, try telling that to the football fans in Thailand. Staying on the topic of football, uh, my last story is actually requiring, uh, regarding FIFA. Because FIFA, uh, the global football world organization, uh, has come out and told all competing nations to focus on football when they're in Qatar. Mm. World Cups in Qatar. 
Now, Qatar as a country has been criticized for its stance on same-sex marriage uh, or same-sex relationships, its human rights record, and the treatment of migrant workers. And many different countries participating in the tournament, they've found their own peaceful way to protest uh, against Qatar and the tournament being taken place in Qatar. Uh, for example, England's captain Harry Kane uh, and nine other captains of European teams will be wearing One Love armbands. To show their love, that one love, you know, even uh, same-sex couples are couples. Yay! Denmark Football Club uh, is doing a silent protest. Paris as a city is doing a protest. They won't show some football matches in uh, public areas. Wee oui, wee. Oui. Yeah, so FIFA's basically just come out and said, uh, focus on football, everyone, and ignore the human rights violations, migrant worker deaths, and uh, uh, ignore the fact that we, FIFA, are a corrupt organization. Oh, wow. Allegedly. Hashtag Allegedly. Strong words. And that's it. That was my quick fire round. Very quick. Did you enjoy that, Natty? I really enjoyed it. Do you feel updated? Very updated. <laughs> yes, and. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, those were some of the headlines uh, mm-hmm. from across Thailand. And uh, we hope that you have enjoyed your morning cup of coffee or evening before you're going to uh, go to sleep with some updates. If you did enjoy this video, please click the like and comment button. For now, we're going to end the show. However, we are going to do a live Q&A today. So today's Friday. It's a special day. We're going to do a live Q&A live stream right after this live stream. So they have to click into a different That's one. That's right. Immediately after. So that good people who enjoy Good Morning Thailand can enjoy Good Morning Thailand. And then we can have a further comment section. Oh, so join us for some fun with the voice of God. Voice of God. She's joining us. Uh, until uh, So see you in about two minutes. Look for the stream on our YouTube channel for now we hope you've uh, enjoyed this episode and have a great day and an even better weekend until then see you take care bye bye bye